welcome everyone. I'm Katherine Lawrence. I uh, oversee the Community Engagement and Exchange Area of the Science Gateways Community Institute. And I'm really excited that we're gonna have a chance to share with you today in this special webinar information about one of the programs that we offer called Focus Week. Um, we have, if you're interested in knowing more detail about some of the aspects of it, we have had in the past some deep dives into some of the content that is offered, and um, we could certainly provide links to those uh, webinar archives on the page when we post the recording from this event. Um, part of the reason we're doing this webinar is because we have application um, forms open now uh, for those of you who might want to attend Focus Week during the year of 2020. The first one will be in June in, in um, New York, uh, Columbia, and the, and the second one will be end of November, beginning of December uh, in San Diego. Um, and there will be, I'm sure, more information about that in this slide, um, the slides following. Um, so just one request, which is keep your audio and video muted while you're on the call, um, uh, just so that we don't have anything sound distractions. Uh, those controls are in the bottom left corner of your uh, window. And, um, but you're welcome to submit questions using chat at any time uh, through uh, the chat system of Zoom. Um, and I'm gonna be keeping an eye on all those questions and I'll, I'll pass them along to our presenter, Nancy, um, uh, as they come up. Um, as I mentioned, we will be posting this recording and slides of this if you if you need to follow up and look back on things or you want to share them with a colleague to convince them to participate in Focus Week. Um, and those are usually posted pretty quickly after the end of the uh, webinar. Um, then also, uh, I would like to tell you a little bit, though, about the Science Gateways Community Institute to set some context for what you're going to be learning about today. So um, the Science Gateways Community Institute was formed in 2016, um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the motivation of that during Nancy's talk. Um, but uh, essentially, it is funded by the National Science Foundation to, to support gateway projects in three different ways. So the first area in which we support the gateway, gateways is to help with building and running them. And that includes up to 25% of a person uh, person's time doing hands-on development support uh, programming uh, to add either a feature or even to get a gateway started. We also provide consulting advice uh, from people who have specialized knowledge about certain areas. And, and those are the kinds of consultants who are featured in Focus Week. So you're gonna hear more about that um, but these are topics like uh, usability and sustainability and cybersecurity. Uh, so that so the team of people who who are part part of instructing, um, providing instruction during Folks Week, are the, um, the same team of people who provide consulting one on one with projects. We also offer a catalog of gateways and software, and this offer has two purposes. One is that the gateways, um, any gateways, if you have one, for example. Um, can be listed there to let help people find you more easily and find out that you exist as a resource for their discipline. But also, uh, some in some cases, people who are creating new gateways browse through as a way of, of pinpointing and saying, hey, that's what I want my gateway to do. Can I make a gateway that's just like that, but for my discipline? So that's something to keep in mind. Also, um, the software collection, which is also sizable, um, is, is all sorts of tools that are sp very, um, very commonly used for gateways in one way or another. It might be for data processing, it might be a whole platform um, for building a gateway such that you don't have to um, uh, invent a gateway platform from scratch um, uh, or you know, a variety of, of things in between. So that is what the catalog is there for. Uh, and, and then many of the, or several anyway, a subset of those software projects are also what we call SGCI affiliates, which means that they have agreed that they'll provide support to people who contact them for help with their gateways um, to provide advice and other guidance as they get started using that software. The second main area in which we provide support is through education and training. For example, this webinar series. So we do this usually monthly, but we every now and then have these uh, special uh, webinars. And the topics are all over the place. Um, most recently, we've been running a series on different kinds of gateway platforms. So I encourage you to look and see what's been presented already and um, upcoming ones that we'll be having. Uh, and we also 
uh, then of course provide Gateway Focus Week, which you're going to hear all about today. Uh, and and um, I want to call attention to the student focus programs. Those include a summer internship program. And if you have a project and you'd love to have an intern, we are always looking for places to um, send those interns. So our website does have forms for uh, indicating that you'd like to host an intern. You can uh, indicate that you know an intern already you'd like to have, or we can match you up with one who has applied independently. Our annual conference is also a great way to learn more. We have tutorials as part of that, as well as other uh, in informational presentations. And of course, our website is also there for providing educational materials. And then finally, this um, community wouldn't be called the Science Gateways Community Institute if it weren't for that aspect that we think is so important. And so one of those, um, so one of the really important parts of what we offer through the Institute is um, finding ways of connecting you with other people and organizations that are important to what you do. Um, so our partner program uh, provides uh, uh, it's a collection of other organizations that provide complementary resources and we can point you in, in that direction. Um, you're welcome to browse through those partners on our website. The affiliates program I mentioned earlier are software, uh, uh, software projects that are willing to provide support to gateway projects. And then uh, we, we love it when community members are interested in posting their news or blog. Uh, they can do guest blog posts and job offers and so forth on our website. And also, uh, finally, uh, the community forum is a Google group that we set up so that anybody who wants to uh, join and use it as a way of connecting with other people who are developing gateways um, to ask questions or you know share experiences. Um, uh, it's it's another great way of connecting. Um, it doesn't have a ton of traffic, but it is a way that some people have been able to pose questions about, you know, I'm trying to do this and I'm not quite sure what the best approach is. Has anyone else had experience with it? And um, they get they always get responses for that for that. So that's something I encourage you to join. So those three complementary areas combine to provide the array of services that SGCI offers, um, and all of that you can find out more about on our website. And then finally, before I hand off to Nancy, who will be presenting the bulk of what we're, you're gonna hear about today, is um, uh, that I would love it if you'd give us feedback at the end of this. I will post this link when uh, at some point during the session in chat, so it'll be easier for you to jump in and uh, give us some feedback. It's two really short questions, plus an opportunity to let us know what it is that you'd like to hear more about, because we are happy to take your suggestions. That's how we shape the kinds of things that we offer. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and let Nancy share her screen. And while she does that, I will introduce her. Um, so Nancy Maron is uh, the one of the two lead instructors of the Focus Week for um, that the SGCI has offered now uh, for, I think we are on to six or, I think we've offered six of these sessions now, maybe. <laughs> we're, uh, yeah, I think we're on to seven. Anyway, I've lost track. They're fantastic. I've sat in on one. Um, Nancy also um, uh, is a consultant who runs her own organization called Blue Sky to Br Blueprint. Um, um, and we engaged her because her in her prior life, uh, she worked at Ithaca um, doing um, research on sustainability of digital, various kinds of digital um, uh, products and so forth and how how these different kinds of things some of which included gateways some of which were more like libraries and such digital libraries but um, how they how they managed to survive in a in a land of scarce funding and um, other challenges so that Nancy take it away thank you Catherine and that was such a lovely introduction so thank you especially for that it was very kind um, and again, this is just an invitation to anyone listening in on the call to, you know, to pipe up and jump in if you have any questions. Uh, our thought was that there are still lots of people who are just learning about this great offering that we have. And so we just want to make sure that people know it's out there and know what a rich experience it is. Um, so feel, feel free to ask. Uh, as Catherine mentioned, we're part of this bigger initiative, which is the Science Gateways Community Institute. But this particular piece is part of the incubator. Um, and offering Focus Week has been one of the kind of flagship um, offerings of the incubator, which also has the consulting services. So essentially, NSS gives us the opportunity twice a year to bring together 
um, up to 10 different teams of two to three people each to come and work together to think about what it means to make their projects sustainable. So for me, this is a real pleasure because as Catherine mentioned, I spent a lot of years on this weird slice of thinking about how digital initiatives, how innovative initiatives can find sustaining sources of support. So the idea that we all get together for a week and get to kind of work through systematically step-by-step -step the important questions that live behind that, uh, to me is like, is a real pleasure. So here's a happy picture of one of the recent cohorts. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit in the presentation about uh, what it is we offer during that week and give you some thoughts about why it might be useful for you and, and definitely feel free to, um, to ask. And I would just say, since I'm having, I'm not great at managing the chat while I'm also chatting. So I'd just say, um, you guys may want to. That's what I'm here for. And ask the question. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. I'll, I'll, um, right. I'll, I'll follow on chat and keep an eye on any questions okay. that come up and mention them great. to you. Yeah. So the other big headline is that, um, with a thank you to NSF, this is under the umbrella of the larger um, SGCI grant. And so in this year, we are still offering this week entirely free of charge to the participating teams. Um, at some point, you know, we will have our own sustainability challenge and we are thinking very hard about how to manage and make this offering available going forward. So, but for this year, at least we are still fully covered. And so we, we encourage people to think about this. Uh, the only cost for attending is essentially getting yourself there and filling in a couple of meals. So for focus week, um, and I should also mention that we've, we've called this the boot camp. This is a business strategy class. There have been different names that have attached to this. Focus week for Science Gateways is a relatively new, new term. Um, but the notion is that people who are working on projects that have a similar, these similar sets, sets of challenges come on site to work with a team of dedicated instructors and we leave everything aside. You know, you show up there, you're asked to put your technology aside unless it's critical to the work you're doing. Uh, and really just to spend time thinking about your project. And for a lot of people, this is revolutionary because we know lots of folks are doing this project with 10% of their actual work day or with um, in their volunteer time or just for fun. Um, and the idea that you're actually spending a week um, doing nothing but asking yourself some really hard and uh, provocative questions about what this is and who it's for and how I can make it better, uh, it can be fairly profound as, as a learning experience. As Catherine mentioned, we have lots of different inventors, inventors, lots of different instructors and lots of different topics, but the through line through all of it is really thinking about developing a sustainability plan. And as you may imagine, I have a, my own strong feelings about what that needs to involve. Um, but the interesting part is it's really nothing shockingly different from a regular business plan, meaning it has to have a logic to it. We're looking for people to think really hard about not just, look, I got a great grant and I'm gonna spend it down responsibly and hopefully we'll have something nice. But we, we get people to start to think about how does the thing I'm building live in the bigger world? How does it compare to other things out there? Who is using it? Who is it for? Is it delivering on that promise that I had for it? And if it is, hopefully it is, how can people who are benefiting from it, how can institutions who benefit from it, have ways of sending some of the love back to us, whether that's in financial or non-financial ways? And when you think about that cycle of support, that kind of virtuous, we're gonna create something great. And as a result, people will you know, reinforce that sense by either paying us or donating time or donating other kinds of resources. That's the cycle we're looking for people to identify and articulate, and that's a sustainability plan. So the way we do that is we actually uh, go step-by-step and again, these are things that are not foreign to for-profit businesses, but we do it in a way that maps the ideas um, gently onto the academic uh, and research world. So some of the things we talk about are, what's a value proposition for your work? And we don't actually just ask that question and leave it out there, but we talk pretty hard about 
who is it for? What value is it giving to users? How do we know that they're getting that value from it? How is it unique compared to other things in the similar space? And once we have some of those ideas, we're able to kind of hone in on what's really special about what it is you're doing, because that becomes extremely important when you have to go out and, I don't know, ask people <laughs> to continue funding it. Um, we have someone come, who comes in and talks about user-centered design. We, we want people explicitly to engage with these things that look like websites and they have interfaces. We want to make sure that those interfaces are making it easier, not more challenging for people to do that engaging. So we bring someone in to talk about that. After we do kind of a big, big picture, like, you know, what, what's the mission, what's the value proposition, who's the, who's the audience and who's it for out there, we have a shift in the week where we actually do some very operational stuff, but we do it in a way you may not have seen before. And that's where we say, look, now that we've gotten an idea out in the world about um, what it is I'm building, who it's for, why it's important, how it's unique, let's actually figure out what it's going to cost to run this thing. So sometimes people feel like they may have an answer. They may feel like they have an answer because they've gotten a grant. So I got $3 million, it costs $3 million to run. But we force people to think about it in a different kind of more creative way, which is to say, if you had to run it tomorrow without the grant, how would you identify the really critical pieces? And how would you put that kind of budget together from the bottom up? And then we say, look, we've just been talking about how great this is and how many people it's important for and all the ways it's important to these different people. Now let's think creatively about how we can take all these sources of value and identify a diverse portfolio of funding sources. Let's talk about where it's going to come from. Is it volunteer labor? Sure. Then what do we have to do to make sure volunteers keep coming? Is it the host institution is going to underwrite us? Fine. Let's talk about how we're going to go to the host institution and make sure that we're written into the institutional budget. Or is it just that we're actually going to go out and maybe sell something? Are we going to license something? Are we going to have some kind of financial transaction that will help us? Uh, fine, let's kind of do the math and figure out what we think we could earn from doing it that way. But we look at it very holistically. We come up with a picture, a, literally a pie. <laughs> what portion do we think is coming from all these places? Um, and then finally, we instituted only a couple of years ago, a unit that actually takes aim directly using the word sales, I'm afraid to say, but the logic is really healthy. It suggests that now that we know where the uh, support and resources are coming from, someone's got to go out and ask for them. So whether it means we're literally selling something or we're just advocating for something, we include a unit that encourages people to think pretty hard about how to take all this good thinking and compelling storytelling and bring it to someone to try to unlock some support from them. So we have a unit on that too. Before I go ahead, are there any questions? So far, no, there are no questions. So I think you're understandable. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take that as a good, as a good sign. Another really, um, really fun feature that we have instituted in the last year, really, is um, a different pace to the day. So when we first started doing this several years ago, we tried to just squeeze as much goodness into, you know, five days of work as we could. And it left people a little bit breathless. It was a little bit too intense. Um, it was a little too much to absorb everything. And so we've learned a lot from that. And this last year, we started doing a session that everyone loves, I, I love as much as anyone, which is called a brain trust. And it's premised on the idea that we've brought all these people together in a room. Let's make sure we are giving everyone as much chance as possible to learn from each other. So what that looks like is every single day, or each of the full days, so three of the five days, we devote the afternoon to having the team do some very specific problem solving on behalf of one of the teams. So we help folks to shape a question, a very specific question they have, and then we use this specific method, which is a very interactive, very fast paced and fun brainstorming method and prioritization method 
to generate some ways to unblock the problem that people come to us with. And so what you have is one of the participants posing the problem and a whole bunch of other participants um, pitching in with ideas. And the other super nice piece about this is that the very end of it involves having the participants pledge to offer support in some way as the person takes these ideas forward. So you end up with actually very actionable ideas and also people willing to back them up. Um, I, I see a bunch more things in chat. Um, again, I'll assume you, you will jump in and stop. Yeah. Me. I need oh, to I was just, stopped. well, since okay. you, I was just waiting to get to the end of this slide. Yeah. So the question actually was about what exactly is a gateway, <laughs> which you and I were debating Good. whether we should yeah. talk about that. Um, do you want me to well, talk I'm about that? You, I can take it. That's fine. I'd be happy okay. to. Okay. So, um, you know, Catherine mentioned my background, um, which is not science research, um, the first time I started working on in this space of the sustainability of digital initiatives was probably with the UK funder JISC, which is higher ed funder in the UK, and probably most of the projects I was working on were digitized collections coming out of libraries. And guess what? They face the exact same suite of sustainability challenges that, what, that these, you know, uh, science gateways face. So we've noticed that um, even though, so the Science Gateways Institute itself comes directly out of this idea that there's all of this firepower, this high performance computing, all this compute capacity, all these very sophisticated tools uh, in need of a way to share them more broadly with the academic community. So that, that's kind of the um, the basic definition for science gateway in its most traditional sense. But if you take, make that a little bit more generic and you think about a resource that exists and freely available on the web that offers resources, whether they are content-based, data-based, software-based, computing capacity-based, and offers them to the academic community for use, you get a little bit closer to a, this broad definition that has application across every discipline. I would even argue it has application across lots of not-for-profits and cultural heritage institutions. Uh, the, you know, it, it's, uh, it's not really locked into um, science as in STEM fields, not at all. In fact, we've had people participate from across a very wide range of disciplines at this point. Well, and, and another um, so example hope, too, yeah. I'll pipe in and say that, you know, there the citizen science type projects, some of which, um, some of the citizen, citizen science projects out there, which we also would consider to be a gateway, um, where they're essentially, um, I mean, what, what, so for example, what Zooniverse calls people powered research, where they're putting up a, a research project there and they want to get input by other people out in the world um, to help analyze data or collect data or whatever. Um, some of those kinds of projects so, are very much in the humanities. So I just mentioned that too. Yeah, and so, um, so right, so they're, they're very, I mean, in fact, if, if folks on this call have questions about is this thing I'm thinking about, is it a gateway or is it enough of a gateway to qualify, feel free to check in with us either on this call or after. But almost always, I'm going to guess if you're interested enough to join the call, the answer is probably yes. Um, but we should, you know, I'd be, I'd be happy to, to check in with anyone on that. The key thing here is that if folks who have created these things have an intention that they're not just doing it for themselves. There's a lot of people in academic and cultural sector who develop something innovative, but it's either experimental or it's for their own, to advance their own research. And, and those things are great. But once it gets to the level of, I'm building this because the community needs access to something. I'm seeking a bigger audience for it. I think that, that there's a need out there I'm going to fill by doing this. That is what raises it to this public importance and, and the, the notion of a gateway. Um, and that's when this interesting stuff starts to really kick in. Well, is there anything else out there? Where does this fit in the landscape of other offerings? Um, how big is your audience? Is it just people in your discipline? Is it people in lots of disciplines? Um, is it people in different job roles? It starts to get us into a suite of questions that really pushes that question of how, how public is public and how broad is broad and how, how deep is the demand for something like this? 
Uh, and those are all critical questions we need to address before trying to figure out how big you have to build this to be viable and, and then what, what it would cost and how you get the funding. So, um, so that's gateway. So um, I hope folks take from this that it's a very broad, fairly encompassing definition. It does need to be something that is online and it needs to be public. <laughs> and, and I think those, those may be the, the least common denominators. Um, I mean, the, uh, the common denominators. So I, I think hopefully that helps a bit. Someone asked a question about um, if the time is spent focusing on your own project or if we use case studies. So I thought I'd take a minute to talk a little bit about that. Um, the beauty of the week is that your time is spent taking the things you learn and directly applying it to your own project. So when you get there, the very first exercise we have people do, practically before everyone says hello, well, we just say hello, just after we say hello, is we encourage people to do what's called a napkin drawing. And that's a very fun, like, you know, interactive moment where people are actually up at whiteboards. And the function of it is to get a first pass uh, expression of what it is you're working on to share with other people. We're not going to ask people to explain in words. We draw it and then we talk about it. Um, and then you go through the week and we refine these ideas over several days. And the last thing we do as a group is a is a pitch deck you've been developing over the course of the week again entirely focused on the applying the ideas you've learned to your own work and what we see from the beginning to the end of the week is quite remarkable in terms of the clarity people have developed from i think i did this cool thing that could be helpful for people maybe <laughs> to something that's fairly sharp and well defined in that pitch deck exercise at the end uh, so rest assured, the work you put in is beneficial to you and to this project. But the way we do it is act we actually use a lot of case studies. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very big fan of that because I think there are people out there who figure some things out. They've run into some brick walls. Why shouldn't we all benefit from, from their pain and their success? So we bring a lot of case studies in. Um, I've been using ones that I have written with colleagues over the years, and that's often used to, as a conversation starter in the early days of, this, of, the, uh, of the workshop. And in fact, along with some of my colleagues, Juliana and Claire, we're actually in the process of developing an entirely new set of case studies um, that are um, uh, kind of examples we have seen um, through working with the focus weeks. Um, in the last several years. So we're going to continue to, to develop our knowledge base. But the case study um, as an object, is a, it's a they're nice short little reads, and they also kind of drive at the strategic questions in a way that will help us during the week. Nancy, another question just came in. Um, sure. Will there be dedicated time for participants to get feedback from instructors on their specific project? Yeah, so that's interesting. It, in, to some extent, um, you'll see that there is a lot of that actually throughout the week. It's kind of built in. So if there's like a two hours devoted to talking about, I don't know, revenue models, for example, one of those hours might just be people uh, developing their ideas in teams with, and the, with the instructors literally walking around the room and spending time with each team. Um, and that happens you know, at least once a day in one of those sessions where there's like a big chunk of time. Um, there's also, if there are really specific questions where it's just, you know, it would be great just to get your thoughts on this. We're literally all on site um, for the whole week. So there's always time to also just sneak in a, a conversation, you know, at lunch or at, you know, uh, a moment after the, the sessions end. Um, where there are things that are much more involved, there actually are teams where after the focus week, um, if the team, for example, doesn't have the capacity, the time really, you know, to um, take a piece of research forward, that's when we start to talk about the consulting services that are also part of the incubator. But, th but there's an awful lot of progress we make actually just in that week. Thanks. I, I think that, that probably does cover that question and there's no new ones yet. Okay. Okay, good. Great. 
All right, so the brain trust, we love the brain trust, super fun, super productive. So here's what the week kind of looks like. And we sometimes tweak this, but it's been pretty stable for a while. Um, people arrive at the, on Monday, we start um, midway through the day with just a, a leveling of everyone's idea of what it means to talk about sustainability. Because, you know, some people may have different thoughts on that. Um, some people tend to skew more towards technological questions. Some are concerned it's just about revenue generation. So we use some of the case studies to collectively develop the definition we're going to be using throughout the week. I mentioned the napkin drawing, again, which allows us to introduce our work to each other. And then we start to get into the meat of the business strategy curriculum. So we talk about the idea of a value proposition, but the following day, we really dig into the the, the meat of it by talking about audience and environment, what it really means, again, to have your project living out in the world, who it's for, how it compares to other stuff nearby. Uh, by Wednesday, we're getting on into the operational side. So we're talking about budgeting. We're talking about funding. Um, the user-centered design, which we have in the afternoon, is one of the most fun sessions where people are actually kind of kicking off their own um, their own uh, user experience uh, exercise and everyone lo loves that because it's quick to do and it's again immediately useful and then we go to, to the next day where we're talking about goal setting and metrics and then turning these great ideas into um, into action through how we promote the work and how we Sell it. And as, as you heard me say earlier, I don't always literally mean selling so much as selling, advocating, making the case for. Because even if you're never going to sell and make a dollar directly from a transaction, you almost certainly are going to have to sell an idea. And we want to make sure that people leave feeling confident about how they can express the need that they have. For, for resources and what in exchange people will be getting for that, what the great value is in exchange. Finally, on the last day, um, the culminating exercise is very supportive. It's not intended to be kind of thumbs up, thumbs down, shark tank, you get funded, you don't. It's more of here's what I've, here's, here's what I've come up with over this week. And people give timed presentations with slides. Um, really showing where they are today, what the key thoughts are they have, how they've clarified their thinking about strategy and what they plan to do next. And the what they plan to do next is important. I'll mention that briefly, but we get that this is just a week. This is meant to be stimulating and supportive and hopefully um, uh, it will induce uh, feelings of great curiosity about finding out more and digging more. Because these present, these are these units will, will give you the seeds of ideas of things you're going to have to continue to do outside of this week. So one of the important things we do on that last day is we have people um, indicate what their next steps are going to be, what they think some milestones are that they want to hit by three months out and by six months out, um, and we check in with you. <laughs> so Claire is on the call, and she, you know, she can attest to that, but. We, we want to make sure that people don't feel like they had a nice week and thank goodness that's done. Now I can put it all aside. This is a, this is a lifelong activity. If these are projects that you intend to keep running, this is ongoing work. So we, we hope that this serves as a lot of growth in a short amount of time, but also gives you the appetite to keep it going forward. Nancy, that leads to a question that just uh, came up. Um, there's yeah. two questions here now, actually. One is, have you been able to follow up with cohorts attending boot camp, Gateway Focus Week? Have they been able to increase their adoption, user community, longevity, additional funding and development, et cetera, beyond other gateways uh, or beyond their original traje trajectory? Yeah, so this is always, Right, this is like, that would be the gold standard, right, is to have a huge amount of data about how far everyone's gone. We have a couple of anecdotes to share. Um, these are just selective, and I think there are some more. Um, I'll, I'll come back to our instructors. But I can just share a handful with you right now. Um, so we had someone come in, I, I, I no, no longer remember exactly which season, but kind of early on, 
um, who had a really interesting idea around um, understanding networks and social media. And it was interesting because he was at a point where it was an interesting concept, but he was seeking funding to fully uh, elaborate the plan. And it, the pitch deck itself, just by having developed slides that were telling the story that he needed to tell, ended up being a very valuable artifact. And he, he told us that the actual pitch deck was what he would take around um, when he was seeking funding and was able to use that to secure um, funding from, from his campus uh, to, to actually create and fully build this out. And I think it was actually two full-time people working on his project, if I remember correctly. It was, it was, it was significant in terms of an investment. Right, and, so, and that's yeah. another good example of it's not I mean, I'm not selling again in terms of a, an explicit transaction, but that's the that's a pitch that worked. You know, between getting two positions is a, you know a major success. Uh, we actually this is an example, uh, and Claire's on the line maybe can share more about this. But this example actually led to someone people who think they're never going to deal with rev like revenue as revenue come, and once we've talked through the different flavors that can take. Uh, some people come out saying, actually, it doesn't seem like such a crazy idea after all. And this is someone who um, may be in that camp who sought to actually look for a paying customer. Um, and so even being with us to have a safe space to just let your mind go in that direction, you know, let's, let's think about what that could lead to um, it is a very, very valuable um, time for people. And another example is uh, a team working out of uh, NOAA on coral reef uh, data sets. And this is interesting because this is a, this is kind of a protected kind of project in the sense that it's entirely institutionally supported. But, you know, no one is really fully protected from uh, the pressure of showing that you're making an impact. And what this team told us is they learned a bunch of different methods of outreach. And for them, outreach is within their community as much as outside of their community. And I don't know that we have stats here, but they felt very strongly that the, the set of tools they, they learned from being with us actually led to, a, led to a more uptake, which is very important. Um, then there's other, like nitty gritty things, right? Like they were able to, to talk about a budget um, in a way that tells a story. So it's not so much that we help you with a budget and we make sure that everything zeroes out or adds up to the right numbers, but we talk about budgeting in a way that is intended to, to be storytelling. Like, here's what our mission is. Here's what it takes to do this work. If you want to see this excitement, here's what, what's required to get there. And that's the storytelling behind budgeting that leads to, um, decisions to fund additional positions. If you can't say what that extra position will deliver and why that's exciting, you know, your stakeholder is less likely, to say the least, to, to agree to fund it. So these guys are a good example of how that storytelling around money can be extremely powerful. Those are three little examples. Um, no, Nancy, I, I know you're want, about to go back yeah. to the, um, just before you move on to the instructors, um, yeah. looking back at the agenda, another question came in that I sure. think is relevant to that. Um, someone asked, is it recommended that all team members attend the entire week or can people pick a day based on expertise, interest, et cetera? Yeah, so we, um, we've been pretty tough about this and it's, it's for a good reason. Um, there's two things. We strongly, uh, I don't think, I think we almost never have brought people in that are not in a team. Every so often we'll have an individual. Um, more often when there's an individual, uh, on occasion, the team member is joining through remote or some other means. The, um, it's a more substantial experience if you have someone on your team to bounce ideas off of. So that First of all, that piece is important to say. Um, the best kind of a team involves people with some decision-making authority. Because we, we don't want you just to get some great ideas here and then go back and realize you're not going to be able to put them into action. So that might look like it's the PI on a grant or the project manager, the, whoever is taking some kind of lead on this. 
And there's also, if that's not a technical person, there's sometimes having a technical person as the second member can be great. Sometimes the second person is has a marketing or sales or outreach function. That's another nice mix. And certainly we're not opposed to having a team of three. Um, but that's, that's kind of the suite of skills that seems to be a really good and powerful fit because it means that people are kind of bringing their, their thinking together and no one is going to absorb the information in the same way either. So that, that part's helpful. In terms of attending selectively, we just really haven't done it. Uh, every so often something comes up um, and there are exceptions we can make. But the value of this is, um, I think I've, I don't have a cute diagram to show this, but I really, um, I see this as uh, there's a narrative even in the order of the elements in the curriculum that goes from this, what am I doing and why am I doing it to, you know, how does it live in the world to great, now how do I operationalize it? And those ideas happen in sequence. So just coming in to dip into one piece or another um, would might actually even be a little bit challenging because you, you won't have gotten the sense of why we are where we are the day, the day that you come. So we, we strongly encourage people um, to be there the entire time. And it would, we, we you know, our preference are for teams that can be there the whole time. And can I add also, I'll mention that another really wonderful benefit that has come out of this is the um, camaraderie that builds among all of the different teams who are present for the for the week. Um, they provide support to each other in the sense of they get to know each other and each other's projects. You're giving feedback to each other and and because each person, like after they all do their napkin drawings, they all present their napkin drawings. So right up front there, everybody knows about everyone else's project. And then as different things and tasks happen throughout the week, you're you're learning about each other's projects. And, and that's where you're not only able to provide the best feedback to each other, but you're also able to get the best feedback from other people. And, um, and, and then going forward, I mean, there have been people who've had reunions to get together at other major conferences just because it's, it's a great source of uh, inspiration and encouragement. Yeah, and I'll, I'll so, tag on here too. This is Claire. Um, with the brain trust exercise, especially we have folks um, leaving the exercise with commitments to the team that participated in the brain trust for that day. Um, and these commitments we've been following to see if folks have actually um, had the opportunity to make that ask and some of these things could be um, really just some lightweight tasks to help the team achieve um, a small part of their goal, such as testing out their um, beta version of their gateway or introducing them to folks that can help with some decision making. Um, so definitely a strong network to rely on moving forward. Yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure that I um, reminded people that even though I'm the one talking today, um, what's great about this week is is that there's a team of people, and so these are these are uh, most of us, I guess. But there's kind of a rotating cast. Um, Mike Zentner is kind of the uh, the team captain, and he's a uh, kind of his uh, you know vision got, got kind of guides this whole enterprise. But the the through line again on business strategy ends up being units that are taught by some combination of myself and Juliana Casavan, who runs uh, projects that support startups at universities. Um, and so uh, the two of us. Um, love working together and love working with the teams and you'll see the business strategy kind of bounces back and forth between us throughout the week. Um, but rounding out the team are like these great experts who come in and offer these special areas. So we have Paul who comes in and does the user experience piece, which I mentioned is tremendously lively and productive. Nate comes in and wows us with spreadsheets and talks about budgeting. And then Mark um, offers a taste of, uh, of tech strategy and cybersecurity. <clears throat> so, um, and some of this, you know, has changed uh, a bit uh, session to session. But the point is, there there are a bunch of us, and so you, you get a, a lot of different uh, voices in the room and a lot of different flavor. 
So um, depending on what kinds of questions you have, you're almost certain to have someone on hand that you could ask who would, ask, who would actually have the proper background to help you. Um, so the other thing that we're doing, this is a great innovation, is um, I'm saying that tongue in cheek, but we're very happy to be able to announce this early in the year, not just our next session, but both sessions for the year. So what that means is um, if you can't make the June session or if you don't like the fact that it's on the East Coast, we have something for you later in the year that's in San Diego. Um, so these are the two that we're offering this year. I believe, Claire, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the application permits you to submit for either one. Uh, the deadline for the first one obviously comes up sooner, but we can, uh, we can certainly look at these in a rolling way. So we're very happy that Columbia is going to be um, hosting us in uh, Upper Manhattan in June, and then we'll be at the San Diego Supercomputer Center um, later in the year. Uh, if you're at an institution, by the way, I should mention that um, is um, that might be interested in becoming a host. That's something we would love to hear about as well, because we're we're developing these partnerships. It's a relatively new model for us. But uh, as things go forward, particularly as we start to think about um, needing to charge to help partially subsidize our, our direct costs for um, running these events, um, the host institution has certain benefits, including being able to send people to the program at no charge. But for this year, no one has any charge, so it's just uh, it's just uh, a little simpler. Right. I'll jump the applications. In. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um... I'll jump in here and say too, real fast, because um, I know you have the application up. Um, so that first session in June, the deadline um, to submit your team's um, bid in is March 27th. Um, and I just wanted to also share that it is a bid. Um, we do review teams that are uh, proposing to say they would like to attend just to make sure that it looks like a good fit and we can ask some questions um, following what has been shared by the team. Um, in, in addition, teams, please don't feel shy about applying. Um, we don't have any strong requirements like i does where you have to uh, leave by starting, uh, creating a startup out of this session. We're not asking anything like that it's simply for you to really um, dig deeper into that sustainability planning and making some strategic steps towards your project's future. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I think that is, oops, I think that is, uh, that's, that's all we got. We encourage you to apply. Um, teams of two to three are really ideal in the range I, I mentioned. Um, if there's a reason why there's, not all members can go all the way through. Uh, just let's talk about it. Let's figure out uh, if that's an issue or not. But we encourage everyone to be there for the entire time. And um, I think maybe Catherine or Claire has shared contact information for further questions that might arise um, after this webinar. So yep, now we I'm put happy that to in as well. Yeah, we put that um, in chat in the chat section. We put the our uh, email address as well as the link to the where the application information about Focus Week is. There's also I'll mention the link to um, our evaluation form to give us feedback about this webinar as well as if there are topics you'd like to see in future months. Um, this is a special edition, so we our usual time for webinars is the second Wednesday of every month at this time, um, and. Um, so, and then Nancy just put in her own email, so you have access to that. Um, if, if it's okay with you, Nancy, I'm gonna share um, also information just so people have it handy um, uh, on the screen, the information about um, uh, both, it has the link for the Focus Week, but also um, it has, <clears throat> sorry, the, um, the information about our next webinar too. I'll just put that up there. While we, if if other folks have other questions, we can take those questions mm -hmm. while, um, while that while this is displaying. So I'm going to share that right now. So um, you should be able to see there now. I hope uh, the <clears throat> our 
information about both where you can find the um, recording and slides from this webinar on the under our archive at uh, the top of this um, page, um, our evaluation location. And then our next webinar is going to be March 11th. Um, it's part of this series that we're doing on gateway platforms, and this upcoming one will be uh, about Hub Zero. You might, if you were paying close attention to the names of the instructors of uh, for for um, Focus Week, Nate Snodgrass, who talks about budgets and spreadsheets, is the program manager for Hub Zero, and he'll be presenting that. So he works part time on Sci uh, Science Gateways Community Institute, as well as with uh, uh, Hub Zero. Um, if you found out about this through a colleague and you want to be informed about when new webinars are happening and other opportunities like our conference, which we've just begun our call for participation, um, you can sign up for a newsletter at this, at this URL that you see here as well. Um, and finally, um, the student programs that I mentioned at the beginning are, are open. Thank you for participating today. I hope some of you will consider applying and that we will see you at the next Focus Week. Nancy, thank you so much for sharing all this My with pleasure. us and thank you all of us, all of you guys in the audience for joining us because it's great to see all this interest.